the pleasure to introduce you to the President-elect of the General Assembly for the next session, His Excellency, the Ambassador of Nigeria, Professor Tijani Muhammad Bandi. focus on peace and security. Poverty and education, zero hunger, quality education, climate action and inclusion will constitute the major priority of my presidency. Our aspiration is really to see that Africa gives good leadership to the organization. From all corners of the globe, the world is constantly experiencing turbulence. United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon at the 70th anniversary of the United Nations painted a clearer picture when he said, In many respects, the world is shifting beneath our feet. Yet, the Charter remains a firm foundation for shared progress. Therein lies the driving force of member states of the United Nations as they work on reforms to improve the delivery of the multilateral organization's mandate. Our president heads the General Assembly. The leadership is elected by representatives in the United Nations on a yearly basis to preside over the sessions for a year. President and 21 vice presidents are elected three months before the opening of the session over which they are to preside. The position of the presidency is rotational between the five geographic groups. It is a tradition of the United Nations that no permanent member of the United Nations Security Council serves as the president of the General Assembly due to the supreme powers. La situation humanitaire In accordance disaster. with the geographical rotation policy of the organization, the presidency of the 74th Assembly was zoned to Africa. The continent was unanimous in putting Nigeria forward, giving her roles in regional, continental and global peacekeeping. Africa itself has a zoning system where all the sub-regions are to rotate the presidency. The last president of the pres uh, that came from Africa was from East Africa. So the next one is supposed to come from West Africa. And so we, we, we decided that we could run for it. However, we, there were some countries, I'm not going to mention names now because they had uh, 
they be, they've been able to see the reason why they shouldn't run with us. After some diplomatic shuttles, even from the very top, from Mr. President himself. And so that was how we were able to get them out of the way. Nigeria has always shown leadership at the United Nations, especially on issues surrounding conflict resolution, security sector reform, and other ideals and objectives of the United Nations, in line with the provisions of the 1999 Constitution. The federal government wasted no time in submitting the name of the nation's permanent representative to the United Nations. Professor Tijani Muhammad Bande as candidate for the 74th Presidency of the General Assembly. Nigeria's Professor Tijani Muhammad Bande from Kebi State is a seasoned scholar, administrator, and diplomat. He obtained his MA in Political Science from Boston University. United States of America in 1981 and a PhD in political science in 1987 from the University of Toronto, Canada. Amongst his numerous achievements, he served as the Vice President of the General Assembly during the 71st session of the United Nations General Assembly and also Chair of the United Nations Special Committee on Peacekeeping Operations C-34. Special Committee established by the GA, which reports both to the GA and to the Security Council relating to matters of peacekeeping globally. And Nigeria has been privileged for a long time to serve as chair of the committee because of the initial uh, efforts of Nigeria uh, which has been appreciated in global peacekeeping efforts. Now, each year, the committee does a report concerning the state of peacekeeping, which, with recommendations, uh, especially to the Security Council, uh, and uh, often there is a consensus concerning direction. But uh, it is a very important uh, committee, uh, and it, it, obviously anything to do with peacekeeping is important. You, you can see that uh, uh, troop contributing countries uh, are very serious concerning their own contribution. Uh, without peacekeepers, many countries will be in trouble. Muhammad Bande has a strong desire to promote international peace, security, and conflict prevention while strengthening global action to address climate change issues. On his scale of preference is also the empowerment of youth and women. When we started this process, we reeled out a vision. And that vision, we made sure it was produced in all the major six languages of the United Nations. I have been told that of, of recent history, that has not been done. But why we did that was to also drive the point of inclusion. Because in our vision statement, we talked about inclusion. We talked about leaving no one behind. And so it was necessary that every language of the UN was captured in, uh, in ensuring that the vision statement was read by all. And that was uh, where we started from. And so when we met the various groups, we sold our vision. And what, what were the elements, or what are still the elements in this vision? Number one, we talked about peace and security. The second was climate action. And then we talked about eradicating poverty. We also talked about eradicating hunger. And then we talked about uh, education. Then we brought in another element which we, I talked about earlier, that is inclusion. Inclusion has to do with ensuring that issues of gender, the issues of rights, are also given prominence during our presidency. And so I can tell you that when we, when we met all the various groups, everybody bought into that vision because it took, it took care of the interests of all the various groups of the UN. And in particular, we ensured that the issues that border on Nigeria 
and not just Nigeria and Africa, we, they, we are going to drive them. This matter of illicit flows is not a North or South issue. It is, it is really a global matter. Uh, so uh, there is no question that illicit flows uh, is a serious issue. And Nigeria, under the leadership of President Muhammad Buhari, has championed this as his own approach to, among other things, to fighting corruption. And you made reference to his being made champion. He's been made champion of the AU last year to really galvanize support for anti-corruption measures around the continent. And uh, this, again, also resonates with action done here concerning transparency and accountability. The vision of the African Nigeria presidency is tailored towards the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and all the existing mandates that are also in tandem with the goals of the United Nations International Decade for People of African Descent. The 74th Presidency of the General Assembly appears set and determined to confront the myriad of challenges across the globe. The United Nations Deputy Secretary General, Nigeria's Amina Mohammed, aligns with Bande's aspirations as she makes a case for a sustainable development agenda that will change existing narratives. For the first time, we're not putting a band-aid on the problem, we're looking at the root causes. And unless we make the investments to look at those root causes, we are going to continue to have conflicts escalate, we're going to continue to see damage in the environment, and more and more people are going to be excluded. The inequality is going to be a mainstay which is just not sustainable. I think it is time, and I think uh, the sustainable development agenda has come off its time. And, and this is where, you know, member states are very serious about the process and what they want to get out of it. Clearly, we can no longer continue to test the planet the way that we do. The one thing about this wonderful planet that we have, the home that we have, is that it can exist without us. We can't exist without it. So there has to be a balanced responsibility um, in, in terms of um, the way in which we live. There is a tension where countries need to grow, and so they will do so by burning more coal, perhaps, and using more fossil fuels. But we need to find a way to bridge that to renewables, which will do better for our planet. That's where developed countries have to step in and help with the technology, help with the financing. This is an agenda about investing. It's not charity. It's in everyone's interest. On May 13, the United Nations organized an informal interactive dialogue with Mohammed Bande to respond to questions from other colleagues. I now have the honor to give the floor to His Excellency Tijani Mohammed Bande of Nigeria to introduce his vision and priorities for the presidency. You have the floor, Excellency. Ladies and gentlemen, I feel highly honored to have an opportunity to interact with all of you for the purpose of further enunciating the vision which Madam President herself has also circulated to all of you in all six official languages of the United Nations. Indeed, today in this introduction, you may find some ideas which you also raised during my various interactions with a number of, or indeed all the groups, just to indicate that as a rule, we need to listen and will continue to listen from now going forward. Clearly, the questions that bedevil humanity, that need solution of the highest importance are looked at in all the ramifications by this important body. And it does so in true partnership with all who can assist in solving those problems. What problems can we address today? Dealing with climate change, terrorism, pandemics, 
global warming and related issues in our individual configurations, either as groups or as even countries. Madam President, the crisis of today are, are well known to us, but it's always important to remind even the combated. Terrorism alone and climate change have brought to the fore the urgency of these kinds of issues that this body must continue to address. It is in this light that the priorities of the presidency at its 74th session, if elected, will one, consist first of all in carrying the mandates from previous sessions. This is critical because these are mandated things from all of us. And it is well known that during the debate itself, we will have to have space at the highest levels for the issue of universal health coverage, the issue of the high level political forum, the issue of climate action, and two others that are critical. I'm glad that uh, you've made human rights and gender equality a, a core priority in your vision and also in your statement uh, today. Uh, in a more practical way, how do you intend to pursue this priority, both internally and, for instance, starting with gender balance in your own office and externally with uh, launching and continue to support initiatives like Women in Power or UN for All? The Secretary General has worked very well in getting equality at the level of management. This is commendable and we have to learn from it. The PGA in its office will do the same, making sure that nobody is excluded and gender equality will be clearly reflected. We're not dealing with women in one corner. We are dealing with mainstreaming in all activities. This is extremely important. The focus on violence against women and having a special representative dealing with this problem, including violence in conflict. These are elements that are extremely important and need to continue because they, they address particular things in a specific way. Uh, we believe that also the Security Council should be reformed to make it uh, truly representative accountable, democratic, transparent, and efficient and effective. I would like to thank him very much for his very comprehensive presentation on his priorities and his vision for his work. I do think we will be in good hands, Ambassador. I would like to first of all express the support of the delegation of Paraguay in my national capacity and indeed in our capacity as chair of the group of landlocked developing countries. I also thank Ambassador Tijani for presenting us with his vision and priorities for the next GA session. You've mentioned partnerships many times in your presentation, uh, Tijani, um, when you were talking about poverty, hunger, and education, and the implementation of the SDGs. I agree with you that it is the key uh, to the implementation. How, as the president of the PG, will you push partnerships? To Working with organizations brings to value two things. One, it makes it easier for the UN to achieve its goals. Two, it also allows those organizations to learn from the globe at the same time. The whole question of subsidiarity is key. Problems are solved better at levels that are closest to them, better able to do this. And I think. The, the fact that the Secretary General has already an elaborate office and offices indeed dealing with coordination with regional organizations must be supported. And the extended mandate also of regional economic organizations uh, in the general work of the regions, I think is also, uh, is also part of this 
element that regional organizations are important and already there are platforms created and I think what we need to do is to really deepen them, not to reproduce them. A Nigerian delegation led by the Director General of the National Intelligence Agency, Ahmad Rufai Abubakar, arrived earlier to support Professor Tijani Muhammad Bande, hoping to leverage the opportunity to accentuate Nigeria's voice on critical issues confronting Africa and the world. Claro, al excelentísimo señor Tijani Mohamed Bande de Nigeria, elegido por aclamación presidente de la Asamblea General en su septuagésimo de sesión. Nigeria's Professor Tijani Muhammad Bande was elected by acclamation. And as a Nigerian as a, and an African, you have invaluable insights into the continent's challenges, such as the Sahel and the Lake Chad Basin, and more broadly, into the challenges our world faces across the three pillars of our work, peace, sustainable development, and human rights. This candidate represents not only just the ECOWAS that has endorsed him, but also the Africa, African Union and then the continent as a whole that endorsed him. But also it tells you about the clouds, the experience, uh, uh, the knowledge that the candidate himself uh, uh, is going to bring uh, to bear in the work. And you've had the testimonies of all the uh, representatives of the regions, including even the United States of America, that this candidate is, uh, is the perfect choice and, uh, uh, and he's bringing a lot of, uh, of, of knowledge and experience to do. So we are happy that this has taken place at this moment. It's a very important day for Nigeria. When you consider that uh, this is happening with our international relations about 30 years after it first happened with the late General Joseph Garba. So the support for it, the enthusiasm for it at the highest level of government, you know, cannot be measured. As you can see from his interactions on the floor before the election and during, you know, that process. On first name terms with virtually every ambassador, nearly 200 of them. So we got somebody who really has raised has escalated the name of Nigeria and of the continent of Africa, and this is something to really be very, very proud of. We have countries who have pledged to give us personnel. Some have pledged to give us money to run the office of the President of the General Assembly. Professor Bande will go to the people. Professor Bande is known all through the UN circle. Even if he's walking along the road, you can hold him down to say, excuse me, sir. Uh, this issue, I need you to give some light to it. He is ready. A reception to celebrate the collective achievements of member states as they prepare to work together to promote international peace and security, develop friendly relations among nations, to make the world a better place. Professor Tijani Mohamed Bande will take over the leadership of the United Nations General Assembly in September from the President of the 73rd Session, Maria Fernanda Garcés Espinosa. <laughs> Thank you. 
The General Assembly, also known as GA, is a major organ of the United Nations and the main deliberative policy making and representative structure. It is the only organ out of six which gives equal representation. One nation, one vote. This is where the 193 member states meet to brainstorm on strategies towards resolution of disputes and ensuring commitment to implementation of international legal obligations. <laughs>